bombs. The chance of your being hurt by an atomic bomb is slight, but since there is a chance, you must know how to protect yourself. To protect yourself, you have to know what the bomb does. Besides blast, there's radioactivity and heat. Can we protect ourselves from these? These children are protected. Concrete walls help stop radioactivity. Any wall stops the heat. The heat scorches the house, but does not harm the children. Any solid gives some protection. The thicker it is, the better. We have the national defenses to intercept an enemy, and we all form a team to help each other through emergencies. You are on that team. So is your family, each member of it. And in your community, every doctor, fireman, every policeman, and nurse, every lineman and operator, every civil defense worker, in fact, Every community employee is ready to help you if you need him. So your community is prepared for emergencies and ready to help other communities. We have state and national headquarters for civil defense. And your city has a civil defense corps. We have a warning system and a system of defense. Yes, we have the equipment and the people for an effective team. But, like any team, it can win only when everyone knows his job and does it well. What is your job? What if a warning siren sounds? What should you do? Look for cover, the nearest cover. Don't try to make it home unless home is the nearest place to go. Don't hesitate, find cover. Everyone is in on this. Strangers will understand. Finding shelter quickly may save your life. If you can't get into a house, get behind a wall or a steep embankment on the side away from the city. Civil defense teams will go into action immediately. If you're home, you've work to do. Hi, Susie. Everything's fine upstairs. How are you doing here? Okay, I guess. That's good. We repeat. Cover windows to protect against the possibility of broken glass, heat, and radioactivity. Turn off fires. If you are home and are not assigned to civil defense duties, go to your prepared shelter. Those who are in shopping centers, go to prepared well, shelters the immediately. Out. Now we'll go down the basement. In this practice alert, we are assuming that the attack will come on the waterfront area. See, it's just practice. All this rushing around for nothing. Now there's just where you're wrong. We need this practice. Now come on, let's do our job. That's good thinking. We all need practice. Here's a clean, well-prepared shelter in the basement. Ted and Sue have a battery radio. And they have soda ash and stirrup pump fire extinguishers. They have other emergency supplies too. A flashlight, a well-equipped first aid kit with plenty of bandages, tape and scissors. A Red Cross first aid book, a few cans of food, a good supply of water, blankets, and an electric lantern in reserve. You know, Susie, this stuff would come in handy on a camping trip. I'd a lot rather be on a camping trip. Say, what would we do if we didn't have a basement? At school, they told us we should be away from windows and behind double walls, you know, like an inside hall. Ted's right. If you live in an apartment house, you can't all go to the basement. Head for a shelter area. If none is marked for you, find cover away from windows and in a hallway if possible. Wait for the all clear. Be calm. If you're on the playground, run for shelter. If you're in the schoolyard, get into the building. Move quickly, but in good order. Inside, go to the shelter area you've been assigned. Take your place on the floor. Here's one good way to protect your eyes and neck in case of a bombing. Wait for the all clear. So far, you've been watching a practice drill. 
But what if there is a bombing, a bombing that comes without warning? What is your job then? Find cover immediately. Don't look at the flash. Stretch out. In about one minute, the immediate danger is past. Then head for safer cover. Another bomb may fall. Get indoors if you can. Shed your outer garments. They may have radioactive particles on them. If you're home, take shelter and stay down for about one minute. By then, the danger from radioactivity, heat and blast have passed. Protect your eyes and neck. Let's get things shut up. Sue found shelter under her bed. Dead. Let's get the battery set. When the house current is off, that battery radio is essential. Keep tuned in. The air burst of 3.01 p.m. was zeroed on Union Station. Heavy damage extends from about 14th Street North to as far south as the waterfront. <laughs> You know, we're lucky. To West that blast was miles Stay away. undercover unless you have civil defense to... I've just been handed a bulletin. There's been an underwater burst at the waterfront. Water thrown up by the bomb is falling as mist and rain, and it is radioactive. Avoid this radioactive mist and what rain. What does he mean by radioactive mist? The According to what the Dad said, the radioactivity gets into the mist and rain. And if the mist or rain gets on you, it's apt to make you very sick. What would you do about it? I'd scrub thoroughly with a detergent and water. What's a detergent? It's something like Mom uses when she washes dishes and clothes. Don't drink tap water. It may be contaminated. Ted and Sue are waiting for the all clear. I'll see who it is. Hello, who's there? It's your block warden, Mr. Carlson. Come on in, Mr. Carlson. Hello, Ted. Hello. Ted, this is Mr. Franklin, our radiological monitor. He's here to check for any radioactivity. I saw your mother down the shopping center. She's fine. Well, there's no damage here. No, it's been very good here. Hello, Sue. Say, have you seen my dad lately? He's down at headquarters, and boy, he's really busy. Yeah? Well, there's no radioactivity here. Say, Mr. Franklin, is that a pen on your coat there? Oh, no, that's a dosimeter. A dosimeter? Well, what's a dosimeter? Well, it measures the amount of uh, radioactivity that I've been exposed to. But this is the meter that I used to check with. Say, Mr. Carlson, is there anything I can do outside to help? No, Ted, everything is under control. You just stay here till the all-clear signal is given. You've done a good job. Thank you, Mr. Carlson. Bye, Sue. Bye. A good job. That's what everyone must do to be safe. Doing a good job means simply following the rules in an alert or an attack and waiting until all is clear again. In this early and troubled stage of the atomic age, our very lives may depend on always being alert. So we backed up our argument with Adams. And when we moved into Japan a month or so later, we saw firsthand that we'd been mighty convincing. We saw a lot of this, and some of this. Sort of gave a guy the shakes. 
That is until he... What happened? Well, I've got the idea across. I'll have this gizmo fixed in a second. Then put on something easier to take. A rootin' tootin' western. With men fighting it out the old-fashioned way. Yeah, none of that Adam business. Why not? It's our business. You saw what happened in Japan. What if it happened here? What would you men do? Well, that's easy. I'd go see a tailor. Tailor? Sure, have my uniforms altered. Have them cut to let my wings out. All God's children's got them, you know. I'd take music lessons. On the harp, naturally. Well, I'd... Nah, that wouldn't do. I think I'd... You tell us. Okay. Come on. Learn and live. Target for today. This doesn't represent any place in particular. It's typical, and it's important. For shipping, by both water and by rail. For factories. For its big business. It's the kind of a city an enemy would want to knock out. A spot where he might drop an egg, an atomic egg. What an omelet that'd make. Yeah, with us in it, maybe. But not necessarily. Look, I won't kid you about the A-bomb. I've seen what it can do in Japan, Bikini, and Awitak. It's deadly. It's like a woman. That I'd have to see. I mean, never underestimate its power. Don't lose your head, use it. Figure that an atomic bomb dropped on a large modern city like this might kill 50,000 people. That figure might be cut down considerably if folks were properly schooled in individual protection. Handle yourself right and you've got a good chance of coming through. Do the wrong things and you've got a future like an ice cube in a hot toddy. Get panicky and get hurt. Forget about such things as the proper outfits to wear. Light, loose clothes to protect you against flash heat. The enemy was thoughtless. He didn't send you a formal announcement of the big blowout. And you're no quick change artist. Suppose you're taken by surprise. And while we're supposing, let's go all the way. Figure that this is the real article, not just a model. And you're there. Okay, you're in this town and you're on it. Making the best of those three rights they can't take away from you. You're enjoying life. You're enjoying liberty. You're pursuing happiness, whatever shape it comes in. You're doing all right. When. The other guy's around and he means business, so get going. Remember, you're off base. You've just got time to save yourself. Drop whatever you're doing. Find the nearest hole and make like a mole. A subway's okay. Stay out of flimsy buildings. They give bad protection. A basement's fine, preferably under a solid, well-constructed building. And the safest positions are near strong supporting columns or next to the walls protected from falling bricks and two-by-fours. If there's no underground shelter handy, Pick a room in a good building, close to the ground. It ought to be airtight and lightproof as possible, with the doors shut, windows closed, and blinds drawn. Back in 1940, London survived a terrific blasting from the Nazi bombers. And one of the reasons was that folks did just what I'm telling you now. Pretty crowded down in those shelters. There wasn't much fresh air. There was more of it up above. But fresh air isn't important. Not unless you're still breathing.
do what those people did, and you're on the right track. World War II bombs were cream puffs compared to what you may be up against. But the defensive measures are about the same. The blast of an ordinary bomb kills and destroys. An A-bomb's kick is much worse. The old horse and buggy bomb was hot stuff. The A-bomb is hotter. So when you get the warning, don't stop to ask what's cooking. It might be you. The big idea, if you've got time enough to swing it, is to shield yourself by thick, strong, heavy material like reinforced concrete from the A-bomb's blast. And heat. Do that, and you'll also be protecting your hide from its radiations. A lot of people, including you men fairly new to the service, got the notion that radiations are like the double whammy, turned on by Evil Eye Flegel, the comic strip character. Irresistible, I mean. Well, you're wrong. They're mighty penetrating and deadly, but they can be stopped. Authorities know exactly what it takes. Just what thickness of steel, concrete, or wood will do the trick. But you're no authority. Even if you were, you haven't got your tape measure or calipers with you. Even if you had them, you wouldn't have time to use them. You're just a guy trying to get along. And fast. A heavy wall between you and the source of the blast will cut off most of the radiation barrage. But you don't know where the source will be. And radiations can scatter and bounce off the air the way a basketball bounces off the backboard. What you want, then, is a spot that shields you above and all around. That's if you can find it without wasting time. Comfortable? Not me. I've been figuring I got caught away from any of the shelters. Out in the open. So what do I do? Play dead? Right. Or maybe you will be. If there was a ditch handy, you'd flop in it. But there isn't. So hit the dirt like men did in World War II. Lie flat, face down. Cover the exposed parts of your body. The bomb's flash heat is rugged. Don't get curious and look around. Its light can blind you temporarily. You all with me? Fine. Now we're about as ready as we can be for the fireworks. Bombs away. Just one. I want you to visualize what would happen if the enemy somehow slipped it through our defenses. That it's about as powerful as the ones we used in Japan. And that he wants it to explode about 2,000 feet above the city. Right about here. directly below the blast, which we call Ground Zero, is just that, a goose egg, a lot of nothing. And out to a mile or more, the destruction's terrific, with only a few strong structures surviving. Damage naturally peters out from ground zero. But all big explosions are affected by obstacles such as hills. Behind a hill may be a building that came through okay. While further out in the open will be another that went to pieces. The fire started don't exactly follow the rule book either. In here you might get a frying pan and back here, a fire. I've got a very messy picture. Me too. And where do we fit into this? You'd be all right if you found a good spot. Underground and reinforced concrete shelters give good protection close to ground zero. Yeah, but what about me? I'm the guy caught out in the open, stretched across Mother Earth's lap. How am I doing? If you were near ground zero, within three quarters of a mile from it and completely exposed, you'd be a dead duck, a roasted duck. 
And you'd also get a fatal dose of radiation. So what? Any weapon, even a knotted club, might kill you if you're unlucky enough to be in the wrong place. A safe might fall on your head accidentally. You particular how it happens? But if you were far enough away, you'd come through in good shape. And you'd be over the hump. So far as you're concerned, the bomb shot its big wad of blast, heat, and immediate radiation. It goes on sending out rays and particles, but they're rising harmlessly. In about two minutes after the explosion, the area underneath the burst will be free from dangerous radiation. And you can enter it. You've probably got military duties to perform. There's a lot of relief, rescue, and policing work to be done. So after waiting a couple of minutes, get moving. Okay, we survived that one. Now let's put ourselves on the spot again, use our heads and our imaginations a bit more. Because maybe the enemy decides to set off a submarine bomb. Maybe he sneaked it into the harbor on an innocent looking freighter and planted it underwater. Authorities figured it'd have to be plenty deep for the bomb to do its worst. We're going to suppose it's deep enough. Now, chances are you wouldn't get any warning about this baby. You'd sure see it, though. You wouldn't worry about being blasted or burned by a submarine explosion. But watch out for the fog and mist. It's radioactive, packed with poison, and it moves fast. If you saw it advancing on you a mile away, you'd have about 30 seconds to take cover. Make for the nearest entrance, but be orderly about it. That fog has contaminated everything it touched with radioactive matter, which we'll call hot stuff. Although it hasn't anything to do with its temperature. Don't be in a hurry to leave your shelter. Wait till the fog disappears. Then wait a bit longer if you can. It cools off a lot the first few minutes after the blast. It gets less dangerous. It'd be best to wait until the radiological defense men come around to tell you what to do. But if you've got to go, go the right way. Your handkerchief makes a pretty fair filter. Breathe through it. Be quick or be sick. The faster you pass through a contaminated place, the less you expose yourself to radioactive poisoning. Move crosswind as much as possible. Take advantage of cover, of passageways protected from contamination. Don't collect souvenirs like watches and coins. They may be hot. You've gotten out of the danger zone. Your head's in its usual place, your skin still fits. You've got your normal quarter of arms and legs souvenirs, you'll get some real pleasures out of it. Sooner or later, you'll run into the radiological defense monitors. They're the detectives of this atomic business. With their instruments, they examine everything for radiation contamination, including you. If your uniforms are hot, they'll end up same as clothes after a skirmish with a skunk. They'll go to the laundry if they're not too hot. Or if they're too badly contaminated, They'll be buried or dumped at sea. And you'll give yourself the soap and water treatment to remove any radioactive stuff you might have collected. From then on, you'll watch your step. First, report to the nearest military officer or organization for instructions. As soon as they tell you to, rejoin your own organization. 
Your commander, on the advice of the radiological defense people, will tell you which areas are safe to enter and which aren't. They'll also advise them on the food you eat and the water you drink. You'll be careful about getting radioactive material inside you. You can get there by breathing dust, eating, or through breaks in the skin. You'll be told how to prevent overexposure to the stuff. How much of it can a guy stand? How much whiskey will it take to knock a guy in his ear? Well, that depends. It sure does. But the defense people can tell you what the safe limits are. And they'll keep checking in order to determine those limits. The odds on you surviving an A-blast depend a lot on you. OK, Sarge? Right. Get panic here, fat-headed, and you'll probably have a new title. The late John Doe. Which isn't exactly a promotion. Use your think tank. Follow the rules. And you might live to look it over. That's the picture, man. face, without panic, the reality of our times, the fact that atom bombs may someday be dropped on our cities. And let us prepare for survival, for understanding the weapon that threatens us. An atom bomb destroys or injures in three ways, by blast, heat, and radioactivity. The blast of an atom bomb is its most important destructive agent. In Japan, whole buildings were flattened by its force. However, many buildings of sturdy construction, even though close to the explosion, remained standing. The principal dangers of blast are flying glass and debris, the fires it may start, and the danger of being crushed in collapsing buildings. The atom bomb destroys by heat. People caught in the open as far as two miles away suffered flash burns. Yet, protection could have been easily achieved. Here, a bridge post and rail shielded the surface behind it. Any solid material afforded similar protection. The third weapon of the bomb is radioactivity, thrown off at the instant of explosion. However, the majority of people exposed to radiation recovered completely including a large percentage of those who suffered serious radiation sickness. Today, they lead normal lives. They bear children. Their children are normal. These, then, are the weapons of the atom bomb that we must protect against. Blast, heat, and radioactivity. Our cities are prime targets for atomic attack, but mass evacuation would be dangerous. An enemy would like nothing better than to have us leave our cities empty and unproductive. If an emergency should come, our factories will be battle stations. Production must go on if we are to win. Our offices and homes will also be posts of duty, not to be deserted. With the knowledge of the first atomic explosions to guide us, our chances for survival will be far better than those of the people of Hiroshima and Nagasaki if we act on our knowledge and are prepared. The first job is to look over your own home for shelter possibilities. If you live in a private home that is well built, the cellar is the safest place to be. The lower you get, the more barriers there are likely to be against blast, heat, and radioactivity. Select the basement wall nearest the probable target area of your city. If the house is blown over, it will most likely fall away from this wall. If you have a workbench or strong table big enough to get under, move it into your shelter area near a wall or strong supporting column. If the time comes when you actually have to take shelter, lie under the table. If you live in a home that has no basement, 
choose a shelter area without windows on the ground floor. An interior hallway is probably best. In time of emergency, the shelter area should be cleared of mirrors and other objects that might cause injury. If you live in an apartment house, rules for taking shelter will be posted in your building. Learn them. Also, learn the location of public shelters in areas where you work or frequently visit. There are many things you can begin doing right now. Fireproof housekeeping is one, so clean up that attic. Keep waste in covered containers. Don't let trash pile up in the yard. Set aside a small supply of canned goods. They're safe from radioactivity. Have a good flashlight on hand. Electric lights may go out. Keep a first aid kit and learn how to stop bleeding. Make a habit of keeping a bottle of fresh water handy. A radio will be important for receiving vital instructions. Finally, prepare the shelter area and collect all necessary shelter equipment. In case of an actual raid or test drill, the alert will be a warbling siren blast lasting three minutes. Once you hear this, act fast. Pull down the shades or blinds and close the drapes against flying glass. Turn off the burners of your gas or electric stove. Disconnect any heating elements, such as electric irons, hot plates, or bathroom heaters. Side doors, but leave them unlocked. Turn off the gas or oil burners. Taking shelter may be a race against time, even when you have some advance warning. But possibly, there may be no time. An attack could come without warning. The sky would suddenly light up. If a doorway is right at hand, use it. If the nearest shelter is more than a couple of steps away, fall to the ground immediately. Flying glass and debris are immediate danger, so stay where you are until you're sure it's safe to move. If you are at home when a surprise attack occurs, crawl beneath a table if it is very near, or drop to the floor with your back to the window. The immediate danger is over in about a minute, unless the explosion occurred near the ground or water. In this case, Radioactive materials are trapped in the particles of dirt or water thrown up by the explosion. When these particles fall back to earth, they may be dangerous. So get indoors immediately after a ground level explosion. Cover broken windows against radioactive dust with blankets or cardboard. Civil defense radiological teams equipped with radiation survey meters will check on contamination in any bombed area. Stay under cover until you hear officially that it is safe outside. If you have been exposed to radioactive dust, wash the exposed areas. Pay particular attention to your hair. Get all the dirt from under your fingernails. If the people of Hiroshima and Nagasaki had known what we know about civil defense, thousands of lives would have been saved. Yes, the knowledge is ours, and preparation can mean survival for you. So act now. 
Someday your life may depend on it. Speak English, comrade. Remember, that is about the only freedom you do not have in this town. It's American town. Americans, they have too many freedoms. That is another thing you must remember, comrade. For one day it will be your mission to destroy those bourgeois capitalist freedoms. This community could be in Iowa, California, or Tennessee. Looks like an American town. As American as apple pie and ice cream. As a matter of fact, you can find apple pie here and ice cream too. But appearances are deceptive. This is not an American town. However, it may be assumed that such a town does exist, shrouded in secrecy and protected by utmost security, deep behind the Iron Curtain. You might call this a college town, communist style, as part of a long-range plan to destroy our free way of life. These young communists are studying the economic, political, and religious institutions that are the very heartbeat of America. The courses here in this strangest of all schools, espionage as a science, propaganda as an art, sabotage as a business. This nameless American city, deep in the vastness of the Soviet Union, it stands as a symbol of Russian treachery, of long-range communist conspiracy. This town may appear to be an accurate likeness of a typical American community, but it's a fraud. It isn't free. Now, let's take a look at a genuine American town and a genuine American. I want you to meet Jerry Donovan. He's proud of his country, but prone to take his liberties for granted. And he's aware that someone must assume responsibility for those liberties, for our free way of life. Yet, when there's a job to be done, Jerry, like so many Americans, is apt to ask, why me? Now, the important thing that 
really has me worried. No. What's for dinner tonight? Stew or hamburger? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, boy. You like that? Mmm. That smells good. I thought so. <coughs> Jerry, would you say that I was a nag? No more than average. Oh, well. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to be just this one. Why? Well, this morning, you told me that you wouldn't be able to make the PTA meeting next Wednesday, right? That is right. Old Mrs. Potter reminds me of a lovesick hippo. <laughs> Besides, Wednesday's my bowling night. Oh, Jerry, can't you think of anything besides bowling and then television? Well, the way you thought about that PTA, you'd think it was some kind of a hush-hush government meeting to, well, to determine the future of the nation. They can struggle along without me. Now, what about Jimmy's father's son banquet tomorrow night? He's been counting on that for weeks, you know. Well, now, that is different. You wouldn't miss that for the whole world. Besides, I wrote my speech already. Huh? Yeah, I've been rehearsing it all week. Do listen to this. <clears throat> um, Members of Troop 28 are gathered here tonight uh, to discuss the ways and means of finding homes for Trooper Ryan 16 Collie Pops. How's that sound? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty bad. Yeah. No, I can give them a parting, all right. Okay. No, listen, just one more question. Just one. What about your reserve seating? You know, you missed the last one, no, and you missed I the one. Well, honey, you did. All, all right, I'll tell you what. I will talk to my secretary in the morning and find out if my schedule will permit me to go to the next one. Would you quit bugging me? Bill Martin, if you'll ask him to stay for dinner. Hey, that's good. I wanted to talk to Bill about how his team can beat State this year. Again? Well, he didn't listen to me last time. Mm -hmm. Now, Bill, the list of play you've got to watch out for. Now, their quarterback takes the snap back. All right, his hands off the left half, who goes wide. Hey, Mom, Santa's putting coffee on her strawberries. Need to put coffee on her strawberries. Oh, all right, all right. You've been to dinner now, so. Bye, Daddy. Night. Good night, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Good night, Daddy. Good night, Good night, boy. Coffee on the strawberries? Oh, I never thought. Hey, <laughs> go to bed. Is there something on your mind? How can you tell? Mm -hmm. Break a battle. Bill, this is a play you've really got to look out for. All right, fellas. Half time. Uh, Linda? Well? Bill and I have given serious consideration to the situation. Taking into account our ages and... Oh, Daddy, Mother, we want to get married. I'm sorry to see you so suddenly, Mother. I suppose it came as an awful surprise. Oh, really, sweetheart. Congratulations, Bill, and I might add, you're a very lucky young man. Daddy? Well, everybody's through kissing each other. I think there are a few things we ought to iron out. Now, don't get me wrong. Bill, I like you. I'm not against it. Matter of fact, I think it'd be a fine idea. Four or five years. In four or five years? You're both too young to get married right now. Mr. Donovan, I'm going to marry your daughter. And I'm not going to wait four or five years. Thanks for dinner. I'll talk to you later. Good night, sir. Bill! Linda. Honey, now let them go. Sweet dreams. Picture of an American retiring for the night, going to bed in comfort, without worries or problems. Well, almost without problems. Linda and Bill may mean momentary worry, but in America there's always tomorrow, with its bright promise. And problems will work out. Somehow, things always work out. Now, in a few minutes, Jerry Donovan will be asleep. But tonight, instead of the sweet dreams his wife wished him, let's give Jerry a nightmare. A real red nightmare. 
Now, you remember that Russian town we saw earlier? The town that looked like it belonged in Kansas or Ohio or Vermont. Let's lift that town out of the Soviet Union. Let's superimpose it on Jerry's hometown. And those precious freedoms Jerry so complacently accepts. Let's see how many freedoms Jerry might lose if suddenly he had to live under communist domination. different now, and they should, because freedom has suddenly vanished. Your permit number, please. Permit number? Fred, I don't have a permit. I just want to call my house. I want to talk to my wife. Your personal calls are allowed without a permit from the commissar. You will get off the line, please. The operator. Now that you become acquainted with the enlightened communist system, in contrast to the outdated capitalistic way of life, you are now prepared for the next step of your indoctrination, which will be most difficult. When the moral fiber of the United States weakens and the economy collapses under the pressure of competitive coexistence, you will assume control. You will move into every phase of American political and economic life. It will be your responsibility, comrades, to purge the minds of the reactionary Americans so that they will welcome the enlightened Soviet system and conform without resistance to the dictatorship of the proletariat. Again, my congratulations, comrades. Continue the good work. Say, could you tell me what? Yes, comrade. Nothing. Nothing, never mind. God, thank God you're all right. I have something to do. Gee, you Helen, know, I'm sorry I'm late. Something strange happened. Something very strange. I was standing in the plaza... Oh, never mind that. But you are disturbing your children. Their meals have to be consumed without interruption. I don't blame you for being sore. But I'll make it up to you. Tomorrow night we'll have an early dinner at the steakhouse. Take the kids to drive in moving. That would be quite impossible. Tomorrow night you've been selected to address the parents' teachers' committee. The what? <laughs> oh, no, there must be some mistake. They don't want me. What would I talk about? Now, Jimmy's team lost the Little League Championship last year. The subject of your address has already been selected for. The thing will be how the new communistic life benefits the children. Wait a minute. What if I don't want to talk about that? What if I don't want to talk at all? I would advise you not to object. Recently, the party learned that you were on the debate team while in school. They were very disturbed that you kept this back to secret from them. Experienced speakers are needed by the party. They'll make very good use of them. If I can check the kitchen, you look in the back. I'll be upstairs. Hey! What is this? Where do you think you're going? We have no time for explanations. Already we are 15 minutes behind schedule. I don't care who sent your why. You're not going to take another step until I see your warrant. Warrant? We need no warrant. As a member of the Young Communist League, your daughter has volunteered for farm work. Is to be transported immediately. The truck is waiting outside. Wait a minute, let me get something straight. You say my daughter volunteered? That is correct. Here's the signature. Requesting transport to the People's Collective. Signature on that piece of paper is false. And everything you've said is a lie because my daughter would never leave here of her own free will. Sergeant! You've got no right to be in this house. I'm going to give you just 10 seconds to get out of here. 
Daddy? It's true, Daddy. I did volunteer for farm work. Linda, why? The party convinced me that I should free myself as a lingering bourgeois influence for family life. I am ready. Do not interfere. It is for my own good. Then, Comrade Donovan, do not think that your deviationist remarks shall be overlooked. It will be reported to the proper authorities. Treason against what government? 
prisoner has been given his opportunity to confess. I ask now that he be sentenced. Now, wait a minute. You, you've got to listen to me. They say I'm guilty of crimes against the state, but it's the state that committed the crime. And they broke into my home without a warrant. Armed soldiers. He took away my daughter. They traded a house of worship, placed religious objects with phony displays. They called it a museum. They even tried to turn my own kids against me. My wife. Helen, you were there. You know that what I'm saying is true. Tell them. Mrs. Donovan, this document contains your signed statement. It proves that your husband tried to turn your children against the communist state. Is the statement true? Yes. Yeah. Lieutenant Martin, Comrade Kuchesnov, Comrade Malenko, these documents contain your signed statements. They prove that Comrade Donovan is guilty of deviationism and treason. I want you to tell the court if these statements are correct. I will ask you each in turn. Comrade Kuchesnov. Yes, the statement is true. Comrade Malenko. True. Lieutenant. The statement's true. There's no need to continue this trial. The evidence against the prisoner is overwhelming. I ask now that he be sentenced immediately. I want to see those statements. And maybe I'll have a few words to say in my own defense. The prisoner will step back into the box. There is no need to examine the statements of the witnesses. The prisoner stands condemned by his own words. He has challenged the supreme authority of the state. He has questioned its practices and its decisions. And by these actions, he has proved himself to be a dangerous enemy to the proletariat must be treated as such, as an ugly remnant of the diseased bourgeois class. He must be eradicated before the contagion can spread. Comrade Donovan, you are hereby sentenced to be shot. Comrade Donovan. Comrade Donovan, do you know why you're here? I can guess. Do you have any last requests? Yes. Do you really need these? I don't think I'll be going anywhere. Nevertheless, I'm afraid they're necessary. Comrade Donovan, you've been convicted of crimes against the supreme communist government. Being an enemy of the state, you must be liquidated. I have been commissioned to carry out your sentence. But no firing squad? I'm afraid not. However, the last favor from the government, you are hereby granted one final chance to confess your crimes. If you wish, a recorder will be summoned to take down your statement. I have a statement to make, all right, but you can deliver it. You just tell your government that someday its own people are going to get wise to it. Someday there's going to be enough holes in that iron curtain that all of your people will be able to escape to freedom. And they'll be able to build a wall strong enough to hold them. My own countrymen once said, you can't fool all of the people all of the time. Believe me, you communists can't keep fooling the entire world. You can't even keep fooling your own people. Because the news about communism is getting around. But it's only another word for slave. Don't worry, Jerry. That bullet will never reach you because it's time to bring you back from your red nightmare. What you have seen is not entirely fiction. Greater brutality is taking place right now in countries which have been swallowed up by the communist machine. We know that Jerry is waking. Let's see if his dream has impressed him. Helen? Yes, Mr. Donovan. 
Helen, I need I... the kit polished off the eggs. Would you mind cereal? Cereal will be fine. Just fine. I'll get this. Good morning. Stand but one man. That man is you. 